here! Find the cannons! Douse the flames! Get in there, you mongrel! Is it dangerous? Edward. Hmm? Privateering. Is it dangerous? Wouldn't pay so nice if it weren't. Why not sail with the King's Navy? Earn a proper wage? Sail under gentlemen? Sod the Navy's gentlemen. For every shilling I'd earn, the captain gets 600. That's no way to earn a fortune. We don't need a fortune. It's not about need, Caroline. I want food that don't make me sick. I want walls that hold back the wind. I want a decent life. H how long would you be gone with these privateers? A year, I reckon. Two at the most. All right. No more than two. Promise me. <laughs> Was it good for you as well? Havana. I must get to Havana. Well, I'll just build us another ship, will I? I can pay you. Isn't that the sound you pirates like best? One hundred esculos. Keep talking. Will you or won't you? You don't have that gold on you now, do you? Do you sleep? Senor Duncan Walpo, I accept your most generous offer and await your arrival with eagerness. If you truly possess the information we desire, we have the means to reward you handsomely. Though I will not know your face by sight, I believe I can recognize the costume made infamous by your secret order. Therefore, come to Havana in haste, and trust that you shall be welcomed as a brother. Suma su humilde servidor, el gobernador Laureano Torres y Ayala. God's grace, sir. You saved me. A profusion of thanks. Is that yours? It is my vessel, yes. But uh, here lies its poor captain, and I have no art for sailing. I can pilot her myself, no mind. You don't mean to abscond with my ship, do you? I'm Duncan. What's your name, friend? Steed, Steed Bonnet. Well, Mr. Bonnet, let this stay twixt us. 
But I'm on a secret errand for His Majesty the King, God save him. And I must get to Havana with speed. Ah, oh, that is a relief, sir. Havana is also my destination. Our ways lie together. Natural allies, then. Ah, oh, you put me at ease, sir. To think I took you for a pirate when you first appeared. Did you? Yes. You have an uh, uncommon way of handling yourself. Quick and easy, if I may say. Gave me quite a fright. But, all things considered, I think it's turned out to be a rather fortuitous day, hasn't it? You're a natural sailor, Duncan. I did a decent trick at the helm some time ago. Two years before the mast as a privateer. Dash my buttons. Your life seems a grand one, if I may say. So full of adventure. How marvelous. I've seen my share of strangeness, I. Fantastic work. Very promising. All right. Easy now. There you go. Welcome back. Well, your numbers look good. Now let's make sure we can break your brain, all right? I need you to move your head and look at these lights just here. Look up. That's it. Down. So far, so good. Let's get you up. So, welcome to the Sample 17 project. Before you get started, you're gonna need this. There you go. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Hello, bonjour. C'est bon? It works? All right, let's take a walk. Your file says you've done some memory research before, but not to this extent, which is surprising. You're very good. The data streams are very stable. Impressive, right? This building is barely six months old, but Abstergo Entertainment has been a studio for a few years, since 2010. Maybe you saw Liberation? That was our first title powered by Animus Tech. That was just the tip of the iceberg. Soon, we'll be unveiling commercial Animus servers for the whole world to enjoy. They'll offer passive experiences, of course. Edited versions of real history. But only the exciting parts. And we think we found the perfect subject for our first full-length virtual feature. Caribbean Pirates. So that's your gig. It'll just take a minute, okay? See that flashing wireless signal? It means you're hooked up to the elevator. I'll let you do the honors. We're headed up to the Sample 17 studio, second floor. You ready? Let's go. Ah, there's the boss, Olivier Garneau, our CCO. I'll introduce you. Bonjour. Salut, Mélanie. Ça va bien? Well, Thanks. Have you met our new hire? Just started today. I haven't. Bonjour. What project? Sample 17, the Kenway line. Hey them, Connor. Edward, the pirate. Ah, are yar, matey. <laughs> Very exciting. Welcome aboard. Uh, Melanie, can we talk in your office for a minute? Just let me get this one settled and I'll see you in five minutes. C'est bon. Nice to meet you. So? This is the Sample 17 floor. We're diving into the memories of one very generous donor, Desmond Miles. We're pulling all the best stuff from his DNA. And hopefully one day, we can forge some fantastic experiences from what we find in there. This pair of legs is John, one of the wizards in IT. He's just fixing something for you. Not fixing, calibrating. Calibrating, right. So here we are, your very own Animus workstation. 
This is all yours, so sit back, relax, and find us some good footage. If you need any hints or tips, the Animus is loaded with tutorial programs, so you'll have no problems. And I'll check in on you later. Happy pirating. Welcome to Animus Omega, Abstergo Entertainment's proprietary ancestral memory research tool. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns about how to operate your Animus console, please contact your project supervisor, Melanie LeMay. You have been registered as part of the Sample 17 project. Your primary research target is Edward James Kenway, born March 10, 1693, Swansea, Wales. Calibrations complete. All signs normal. All systems optimal. Extra neurotransmitters activated. Havana. I've been here once before. It was a truly awful pleasure. You see someone you know? No, no, no. Just putting on a friendly face. I shouldn't want to be mistaken for a pirate again. Right. Flash rogue like yourself must be cautious. Mad to think Spain and England were at war two years ago, isn't it? Here I am, bartering with Spaniards like they were my cousins. Nothing wrong, Duncan. No, it's nothing. Sand in my hampers. So where's the best squad in town? I'm dying for a quick kip. Or a siesta, should I say. Um, I'm just headed to uh, a public house now to meet some merchants. I could, I could show you the way. Well, lead on. Take your time, I'll be just here. Glad to meet no Welshman deep in Dago country. I'm English myself. Biding my time till the next war calls me to service. Lucky King George, I'm on a piss pot like you flying his flag. Oi! Skulk! I've seen your face before. You mates with them pirates down in Nassau. Shut your fucking gob or I'll fill it with shot, you hear me? <laughs> Edward, is it? Oh. 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 Hey, I warned him. Oh. 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 Sorry about the swift exit. Bit of a misunderstanding. One heaped upon another. <sighs> oh, Jesus. I'm sorry, mate. This is my doing. I'm only trying to keep these Spanish eyes off me. Oh, it's no bother. Regrettably, the soldiers confiscated my sugar for when your dispatches. Damn! And where have they gone? Haven't the foggiest idea, I'm afraid. I suspect those chaps might, but my Spanish is wee mal dad, so I'd, I'd rather not ask. Shit! All right, come on, let's follow them and recover my maps. And my sugar? What, in my drawers? We'll see what happens. about the sugar. I've only one pair of hands. Oh, it's no great loss. Uh, I've got uh, plenty of cargo here to make a profit on my trip. Will you stay here long? For a few weeks, yes. Then back to Barbados, to the tedium of domesticity. Don't settle for tedium. Sail for Nassau. 
Live life as you see fit. <laughs> Haven't I heard that Nassau is crawling with pirates? Seems a very tawdry place. Not tawdry, liberated. Oh, God. That would be an adventure. But no. No, I'm a husband and a father. I have responsibilities. Life can't be all pleasure and distraction, Duncan. Hey, our bonnet. The name's Edward, in truth. Duncan's only a handle. Ah. Secret name for your secret meeting with the governor. The governor, right. I think I've kept him waiting long enough. <laughs> Good morning, sir. Would I be correct in thinking you are Duncan? I am indeed. I thought as much. Woods Rogers. A pleasure. The same. I must say, my wife has a terrible eye for description. I'm sorry. My wife. You met her some years ago at the Percy's Masquerade Ball. Ah. Quite. She called you devilishly handsome. Obviously a lie to stoke my jealousy. <laughs> <laughs> Julianne! Our guest of honor has arrived, Mr. Duncan Walpole. Ah. <laughs> Julien Ducas. <laughs> I hope your conversion to our order is an honest one. I have no love for assassins, but even less for liars. I have not come to disappoint. <laughs> Up for a bit of sport, Duncan? The old man isn't ready just yet. Duncan, where are your wrist blades? I've never seen an assassin so ill-equipped. Ah, uh, damaged sadly beyond all repair. Uh-huh. Have your choice. Where did you find all these? <laughs> I did not find them. I took them. These are souvenirs. Grandmaster Torres, Mr. Duncan Walpole, has arrived. See, si. You were expected one week ago. Apologies, Governor. My ship was set upon by pirates. We were scuttled. I arrived only yesterday. Unfortunate. Forgive my caution, but were you able to salvage from these pirates the items you promised me? Uh, yes, sir. I was. Incredible. The assassins have more resources than I had imagined, but not nearly enough to deter us. It is a pleasure to meet you at last, Duncan. You are most welcome. Come, gentlemen. We have much to discuss. at last, and in such continental company. England, France, Spain, citizens of sad and corrupted empires. But you are Templars now, the secret and true legislatures of the world. Please, hold out your hands. Mark and remember our purpose. To guide our wayward souls till they've reached a quiet road guide all wayward desire till impassioned hearts are cool. To guide all wayward minds to safe and sober thought. By the Father of Understanding's light, let our work now begin. Indeed they will, but... Thanks to Duncan and the information he has delivered, the assassins won't be a problem for much longer. All will be made clear tomorrow, gentlemen, when you meet the sage for yourselves. Until then, let us drink.
Let us find the observatory together. For with its power, kings will fall, clergy will cower, and the hearts and minds of the world will be ours. Good morning, Duncan. Just over here. Edward! Hello, Edward! I found a man to purchase my remaining sugar! Huh? Quite a coup, I must say. He just called you Edward. Oh, that's the merchant who sailed me here. Out of caution, I gave him a false name. Ah, well done. We'll catch up on it later. Very punctual, Duncan. This way. Here he is. A man both Templars and assassins have sought for over a decade. I am told your surname is Roberts. Is this so? You recognize this, I think. According to old tales, the blood of a sage is required to enter the observatory. We have the key. Now we need only its location. Perhaps Mr. Roberts will be eager to provide it. Transfer him to my residence. We'll see him to the prisons, Grandmaster. Double the watch. Well, I'll be buggered. What an active day we've had, gents. Let's see, he's set on all sides by our enemies. We must be more cautious. I do wish I could remain to see our drama done, but I must avail myself of these winds and sail for England. By all means, Captain, speed and fortune to you. With luck, I'll return myself a governor. And with my idiot king's blessing, no less. Adios. As for you, Mr. Walpole, I consider this the first payment in a long-term investment. Gracias. Obliged. I would like you to be present for the interrogation tomorrow. Call around noon. Yes, sir. God, sink me for this pittance. One thousand reals for those maps. That's what? A hundred pound at most. How's a man supposed to become rich in these times with a miser like Torres running the world? Have you ever, um, you ever worked on a plantation before? You know what I'm thinking? I'd like to see this observatory the governor is going on about. He said it were like a device that could follow people around and show where they were. <laughs> a ludicrous idea. Imagine my wife with such an advantage over me. Imagine what a thing like that would be worth. Sell that to the right person, and I'd be the richest pirate privateer in the West Indies. I'll catch you up on it. There's a sage in that house I must speak to in private. Captain Pissoff. Bien que pauvre Pissoff. Where is the sage? You set him free. I had nothing to do with that. Much as I wish I did. Take him to the ports. Send him to Sevilla with the treasure. Oh, wait now! I delivered your treasures, didn't I? You did, yes. But you robbed us of Duncan Wallace. Despicable display. This Tuspat is a ruined man, Caroline. Unfit for life on land, much less at sea. If he goes to the West Indies, it's you who'll suffer. Father! Father! Come, love. Up with you now. That old muckworm! He's wrong about me! 
I hope it's so. You believe me, don't you? Can you not see me? Standing out there on the deck of a ship that's sliding into port. And there I am, a man of quality. With a thousand doubloons spilling from my pockets. Like drops of rain. I can see it. Senna, cómetela rápido. You hungry? We're going top side. Be ready. Lay aboard, lads. Save your singing for Davy Jones, you jagabats! It's a hard wind coming! The man speaks true. You lot weigh anger. As for the rest, half on the foremast and half of the main. Let's outrun this hurricane! By God, we pulled this one straight from the teeth of Neptune. I'm Edward. Much thanks for your aid back there. Adewale. Never been to Nassau, Adewale? Not yet. By God, she took some knocks, didn't she? I think I'll keep her. All hands aft, lads! Taking this one home! I've made my choice, Addy. I'm calling her the Jackdaw. A sly bird I loved as a child back in Swansea. A dark little creature, no? Did it rub you wrong when I took this brig as mine own? <laughs> It was the sort of rub I have learned to endure, sailing among faces of such fairness. It's true. Most of these men wouldn't accept you as a captain. So what fair role would complement such unfairness? I'll be your quartermaster. Nothing less. All right. And as quartermaster, have you any immediate counsel for this Tyro captain? Rest and repast would do us good before Nassau. Water for drinking. Hunting for food and repairs. Well reasoned, sir. Hunting, it shall be. We'll find a decent place to drop anchor. Ahoy, Captain. Find what you need. My needs and wants are oceans apart, mate. But I did fashion myself a new holster. All I need now is a pistol to lie in it. Taken from the holes, just as you said. A little more than a blowpipe. But it'll do. So, are we rested? Or should we idle a while longer? Best way, Anchor. I think the crew is itching to reach civilization. You'll find no civilization in Nassau. But it's a fine place to be merry all the same. Captain Queer Nubs, tell me I'm under arrest. Tell me! Them your breads. Fly away, boy -o. back to your master. Aye, we was privateers together before the wars ended. I'll see you ashore. By God, you're a sight for salty eyes. Come you in and have a drink. 
Morning, all. Oh, I can wait. Who's this? Adewale, the Jackdaw's quartermaster. Jackdaw. <laughs> you named your brig after a poxy bird. Adi, these lads are the better part of our growing confederacy here. Ed Thatch, Ben Hornigold, James Kidd. You let him carry a pistol, do you? Peace, Ben. Ade saved my life. And now we're looking to find a crew to fill out the rest of my ship. Well, there's scores of capable men about. We use caution. The shipload of the King's Sailor showed up a fortnight back, causing trouble and knocking about like they own the place. All right. I'll see who I can muster. Now you'll want to sail somewhere rich with plunder. Have you heard of a place called the Observatory? Aye. It's an old legend, like El Dorado or the Fountain of Youth. What have you heard? It's meant to be a temple or a tomb, hiding a treasure of some kind. That's it. You see here. Oh, oh rot. It's fairy stories you prefer a gold, is it? It's worth more than gold, Thatch. Ten thousand times above what we could pull off any Spanish ship. Robbing the king to pay his porpoise is how we earn our keep here, lad. That ain't a fortune. It's a fantasy. Morning, Kenway. Not a bad-looking tinderbox you got there. You sound a bit green, horny gold. Is it envy? Is mine bigger than yours? No, I reckon it's this Jamaican funk. I prefer the Spanish stuff. So, you've got yourself a fancy brig now. Fine. Well, I'm gonna teach you how to say it all right. And how to take a prize the proper way. Thatch, we'll catch you up at the old fishing village. Aye. Right. Que tengo un buen día, señor. I am Captain Hornigold, and this is my crew. We're sailors like yourselves, but quite unalike in our purpose. For we intend to take all that you owe. Yet no harm shall befall any man so long as he remains at ease. Is that clear? No me mate, señor. Tengo familia. Se lo suplico. Anyone speak English? English? L little bit. Tell your friends we're stealing your goods, and we won't hurt nobody if everyone stays as still as a sandbar. You got that? Please to repeat. Oh, for fuck's sake. Lock them in the hold and take everything that isn't nailed down. Not a bad take today. Keep this up and Nassau'll be the first city where men and women may live as God made them. Easy and free. All it takes is a few drops of blood, sweat, and a swatch of cloth. We fly no colors out here. We praise the lack of them. So let the black flag signal nothing but your allegiance to man's natural freedoms. This one's yours. Light proud. I will. I hand over the docket I lend you. If we're to keep our Republic afloat, we'll need guns as well as gold. That means attacking the Navy. So long as they're flying King Philip's colors will not offend our own monarch. You're a wonder, Kenway. You've a knack for this kind of work. It ain't work if you love it. Ah, ah, it's hard. But 
I ain't doing this forever, lads. Only until I get enough coin to buy some land and influence back home. <laughs> Jesus, will you listen to your tripe? Still dreaming on about that strumpet back in England when you could have any better you wanted here and now. Ah, such lofty goals for you gents. And here I thought I was in the company of scoundrels. A fine purchase today. What's the crew's mood? All smiles and no teeth. And there's a few talking about meeting with Master Kid to steal from a nearby plantation. Plantation? That's ambitious. Profitable too, if we can manage it. Aye. It's a good idea. Why, look. It's the bastard son of the late William Kidd. Still a mere boy, and yet... ten times the demon his father was. Fancy seeing you here, can we? Still looking sleek and mean. Did you steal that costume from a dandy in Havana? No, sir. I found this on a corpse. One that was walking about and talking shite to my face only moments before. Huh. So, what's this I hear about a planned raid on a plantation? Not keeping secrets from me, are you? Not very well. Every day, schooners packed with sugar sail past, coming from plantations nearby. Most times, they stop here, sell off a few crates. There's one man visiting today that had earned you a fine profit. So if you'd like to rob his plantation, I'll point him out. I would. Nice, nice. Here's to our pirate republic, lads. We're prosperous, and free, and out of the reach of kings, clergy, and debt collectors. Near 500 men now pledge their allegiance to the brethren of the coast in Nassau. Not a bad number. Truth. Yet we lack sturdy defenses. If the king were to attack the town, he'd trample us. Then let us find the observatory. If it does what these Templars claim, we'll be unbeatable. Not that twaddle again, can we? It's a story for schoolboys. I mean, proper defenses. Steal a galleon, shift all the guns to one side. And make a nice ornament for one of our harbors. It will not be easy to steal a full Spanish galleon. Have you one in mind? I do, sir. And I'll show you. She's a fussock, she is. Fat. And slow. sailing for that island. I know the place. Natural stronghold used by a French captain named Ducasse. Julian Ducasse, the Templar. Name's right. Didn't know he had a title. I know the man. And if he sees my ship, he'll know it from his time in Havana, meaning he may wonder at who's sailing her now. I can't risk that. And I don't want to lose that galleon. Let's think on. And maybe wait till it's dark before hopping aboard. Gentlemen, as is custom among our kind, we do not plunge headlong into folly on the orders of a single madman, but act according to our own collective madness. <laughs> the object of our attention is a square-rigged galleon, and we want her for the advantage she'll bring Nassau. So I'll put it to the vote. All those in favor of storming this cove and taking this ship, Stomp and shout I! Those who oppose, whimper nay! Nay! 
Never was the King's Council so unified. Boy, where you go in the market? No, I. My parents have asked me to come live with them, and I'd like to. Oh, what do you mean, live with them? You live here with me. I'm sorry, Edward, but my father is right. You had a decent wage when you worked the farm. Why can you not be satisfied with that? With me? Decent wage? That job was near as damn it to robbery. You want to be married to a peasant the whole of your life? All right, Edward. All right. You leave now, Caroline. You'll never know what's coming to us. Caroline! Caroline! Jesus, that's him, the sage. But this thing must be hundreds of years old. Older still. You're certain it's him? Aye. It's the eyes that mark him. Did the Templars say why they wanted this sage? They drew some of his blood into this small glass cube. Like this one. Aye. They meant to ask him about the observatory too, but he escaped. Huh. We're finished here. Quiet. The statue in the temple. Was that the man you saw in Havana? Spreading likeness, aye. It seems another sage has been found. The race for the observatory begins anew. Is that why we're whispering? This is your doing, Captain Kenway. The maps you sold to the Templars have led them straight to us. And now the agents of two empires know exactly where we operate. Leave this to me, Mentor. They have taken Edward's crew as well. I wonder what their lives are worth to him. Take this. You'll attract no attention, and take fewer lives. Who's out there? See that mangy old codger? He's a Dutch slaver called Lorenz Prinz, living now like a king in Jamaica. Bastard's been a target for years. Bloody hell, we nearly had him. By God, you bravos are a cheery bunch, eh? All frowns and furrowed brows. Captain Kenway, you have remarkable skills. Thanks, mate. It comes natural. But you're churlish and arrogant, prancing around in a uniform that you have not earned. Everything is permitted. Isn't that your motto? I absolve you of your errors in Havana and elsewhere. But you are not welcome here. Sorry, mate. Wish it were otherwise. Cheery bunch of mates you've got. You deserve scorn, Edward. Prancing about like one of us, bringing shame to our cause. And what is that? Your cause? To be blunt, we kill people. Templars and their associates. Folks who'd like to control all the empires on Earth. Claiming it's in the name of peace and order. Sounds like to cast his dying words. You see? It's about power, really. About lording over people. Robbing us of liberty. That another message from one of your friends? Aye. I'll show you. So this is the new Libertalia, eh? Stinks the same as every other squat I've robbed this past year. Oi, oi. Why the long face? You falling in love? <laughs> With your blouse. You're welcome to Nassau, gents. Everyone is that does their fair share. Fair share? What is this, a fucking monastery? Um, we was uh, led to believe that Nassau was a place where men did as they pleased. Safe keeping others from doing the same. Aye. Captain Thatch, as I live and breathe. What is this magnificent muzzle you've cultivated? Why fly a black flag when a black beard will do? What brings you two gents this far north? The word is, 
Cuban governor himself is fixing to receive a massive gold from a nearby fort. Until then, it's just sitting there. Itching to be took. Governor Torres himself, eh? Sounds promising. Welcome to Nassau, Captain Vane. Mr. Rackham. Uh, 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 now, uh, where can a man find a bit rough? Do you know what I mean? So, what will you do with your share of the gold we take from Governor Torres? Return to Africa, prince among men. I cannot return to a place I've never been. I was born in Trinidad, a slave from my first breath. Ah. Well, wouldn't you feel, I don't know, more welcome there? As you might feel more welcome in Paris. Fair point. <laughs> with this skin and this voice, where can I go in the world and feel at ease? This country here is my best chance. This country called Jackdaw, where I know the names of all citizens and they know mine. We work together. Not always out of love, but to keep our country afloat. I understand you. Let's take her then. For the citizens of Jackdaw! Well, hello, Your Excellency. I'd got word you might be here. I know your face, pirate. But your name was borrowed the last time we spoke. Ah, yes, I recall. Mr. Duncan Walpole. I missed that one. So, what's a Templar Grand Master doing so far from his Castillo? I'd rather not say. And I'd rather not cut your lips off and feed them to you. Two years ago, we offered a reward for the sage's recapture. Today, someone claims to have found him. His gold is his ransom. Who found him? A slaver by the name of Lawrence Prince. He lives in Kingston. We like this story, Torres. And we want to help you finish it. But we're going to do it our way, using you and your gold. Here's how it goes. Torres meets with Prince, carrying a portion of the ransom, saying the rest is close behind. When we see the Sage, you bring in the rest of the gold, make the swap, and get out. I'll be watching all from close by. No, Kimmer, you run this scheme alone, at the risk of losing the faith of your crew. It makes me ill to think of you bartering with that wretched slaver. Come on, mate. Once we have the Sage, we'll all be rich. Not if young Master Kid gets to him first. Kid? Jesus. That lad's here to kill him. Edward! What the hell are you... Now's the time! No! Not until we see the sage. Here's a quiet spot. I'll see the money. This is a portion of the ransom. The rest is close at hand. It pains me to traffic someone of my own race for profit, Mr. Torres. Tell me again, what has this Roberts fellow done to upset you? Is this some form of Protestant piety I'm not familiar with? Perhaps another day. What? Next time, see to it that we are not followed. Deal with this! Damn you, old scratch! Keep your nutty hands off me! I can't let you kill those men, kid. Not until I found the sage. I've been stalking that pig for a week now, charting his moves, and here I find not one but two of my targets, and you robbed me of both! Patience, man. You'll have your kills. When I locate the sage, you're helping me take Prince. Got that!
Wouldn't you prefer meeting in a pub? I came to Kingston chasing a target. Getting pissed ain't a priority. We could work together on this, you know. It's Lawrence Prince you're after. I want his prisoner. We're after the Sage as well, Edward. Careful who you cross. May the best man win. There's guards patrolling that property from end to end. Looks to me like they use bells to signal trouble. See there? We'll want to disable those before pushing too far. With so many men about, we can't rely on stealth alone, so... I'll do what I can to distract and draw their attention. Giving you a chance to cut them down. Ready? Your name's not James, is it? Not most days. Come on. Hold! Stand your ground! Please. I've been shot. I need aid. Christ, Thompson, look at her. She's hurt. Dreadfully, sir. I'm poorly. All right. I'm faint. Take an arm, lass. Bless you, lads. Over me like a leering crow to see an old man suffer? You've caused no small portion of suffering yourself, Mr. Prince. Retribution, I suppose. You absurd cutthroats and your precious philosophy. You live in the world, but you cannot make it move. You mistake my motive, old man. I'm only after a bit of coin. <laughs> As was I, lad. As was I. Heads up, Kenway! I found your man! I remember you. The Templar from Havana. I'm no Templar, mate. That was just a ruse. We've come here to save your ass from this slaver. Save me? I work for Mr. Prince. Well, then he's a poor man to call master. He meant to sell you out to the Templars. Oh, you can't trust anyone, it seems. <laughs> Lost your man again, did you? Aye. Roberts is a devil with a queer aversion to kindness. I suppose that's two men I've lost today. So, what's your real name, lass? Mary Reed to my mum. And them I call friends. But not a word of it to anyone. Or I'll unman you as well. Another? A rum flip this time. And where'd I find fresh eggs in this wretched town? There's little else but piss and insects. Aye, we're working on that. Oh, oh, dear lady, what do they call you? And when oh. they're sober, a jilt when they're sauced. But never, lady. <laughs> well, good Leanne. I, I, uh, oh, 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 oh. Back of shite! Do you hear me? It's a bag of bloody shite! It's a ruse to keep us off before they attack Nassau. You'll see, mark me. It's no ruse, Fiend. I heard it straight from the mouth of a greasy Bermudan captain. There's a pardon on offer for any pirate that wants it. Ruse or no, I think it's plain the British may return to Nassau with arms, no doubt. We'll need a plan. Walk with us, can we? There's trouble brewing. Devil in his hole, Thatch. This is a darling galley. Thirty-two guns, is it? 
I lost count of 40. You've stepped up a rung. So, any luck finding medicines here? Nothing round this spot, sadly. But there's a few wrecks yonder that have been scoured by nothing but crabs and coral. I'll have a look. Edward? Edward, is that you? My goodness, the West Indies is a compact place. Hello, Bonnet. A surprise seeing you out here? I met Mr. Thatcher a month or so ago, and he offered to take me under his yard arms, so to speak. Says I must wash the hayseed from my hair before I'm a true pirate. Well, good luck to you then. Worst men have become better under Blackbeard's watch. <coughs> Ahoy! Any luck? I found one crate hidden beneath a school of sharks. Sadly, the elixir inside is... quite spoilt. Plague and... perish. Will we steal medicines now? Remember the pardon, Thatch. We're to be subtle. Says Ornegold, a pirate, now too proud to call himself one. Now he prefers caution to cannons. Caution's nothing without charisma. Or if a man plays the fool, then it's only fools he'll persuade, but appear to be the devil. And all men will submit. And would you be the devil? For an audience. Aye. It's all a big show. Give your quarry something to fear. Some hellish thing from a fever dream. And men will drop to their knees, pleading for their lord before all else. <sighs> oh, God. Looks fine. Of course it does. You can find a quiet way to acquire medicines. Tell me soon. Otherwise, I'll handle it myself. And if we drown while we... What the hell's happened here? Were you attacked? Other way round. It were Blackbeard who struck first. Open fire on a British man of war, the pillock. What in God's name for? Still searching for medicines. But he's gone bar me, if you ask me. I'll bring him home. Leave him, man. He's heaped this trouble on himself. Shite. You'll be hanged and sun-dried, just as them there were in Boston. The king's called for a pardon. <laughs> Captain, we've searched the hole. It's a middle intake. But the medicine we found bears a Charles Town stamp. Thank you, Mr. Hans. We cannot resupply Nassau out here by force and accident alone. We should go to Charlestown for the lot. Hello! Victorious! I fear I am not built for the fatigue and care required to live as a man of fortune. Meet me in Charlestown. One month from today. Hey, old bonnet! Flying your own flag at last! Yes! Yes, Blackbeard cut me loose, sadly. Time to have a go at this myself. Well, that's grand. Yes, it's for the best, I think. I should have some wild stories when next we meet. Edward! 
Your constant friendship has been my most treasured find on these seas. Well above gold and silver and rum, I, I prize the courage you have inspired in me this year. Thank you, sir. A fair good borrow to you. Are you not lost? No! Are you not wanted by your wives, and families, and countrymen? How else to explain your government's complete disinterest in your well-being? Hostages for sense. These were my only terms! Six days of pure fucking science. So I must conclude that you men are the pariahs of Charlestown, and I would profit better by using your organs for chum and your bones for char. By Christ! This is my predicament. To kill you, or to press you into my service. It's a decision I'll make hardly, but not with remorse. Ahoy, Edward. What the hell are you doing, man? All of Charleston can see this mess. It's the idea. Out of range, but well in sight. So where's the medicine? We sent a party ashore to partner with the governor. That were a week ago. No noise, he says. I'll handle it. Give me a day. There's movement up ahead. Is it soldiers? Uh. Oh God! Oh God, save me! And flay all you devils! Ah! Blackbeard made you as good an offer as ever a man got from any pirate. You might curse his methods, but medicine was all he wanted. And now he'll get it. You should have bartered, mate. He has returned, Captain! What's the take? Two crates. And the means for mixing additional doses. Uh, that's right thinking. Precious little of that these days. You hear that, Mr. Rags? My young friend returns with offerings and so saves your scrawny neck. Will you not thank him? You should quit these waters, Thatch. The governor, he's bound to muster more soldiers. Now you go on ahead. I, I got some business in the north. You're done, aren't you? Giving up on us. On NASA. Look, lad. I'm late into my fourth decade on this earth. And if I don't find some means to make the fifth quiet, and cozy voyage. I'd rather sink to the devil's doorstep than call myself captain another year. Now we'll meet again, lad. In this world. Or the one below. It works. And if we want information on assassins or Templars or the observatory or whatever the fuck else interests us, Olivier, you will deliver it. Uh -huh. I understand that, Leticia. I'm sorry if that came up wrong. We are not trying to be a bottleneck here, but we just don't have the resources right now to do two times the research. Finding that balance is your priority. Your entertainment products are simply a means to pay the bills for larger and more important work. That's the way the world works. 
dirty money buys clean hospitals. You get it? We're on board, Letitia. Rest assured. We have our best employee working on this, but it will take time. That means you. Good. And thank you. The both of you. I look forward to seeing what you deliver. Until then, I'll see you at the shareholders meeting, Olivier. Looking forward to it. Bye-bye. Tabarnak! It's a little too early for that kind of abuse, huh? Come on. So, what's next? We do as the lady says. Focus on the observatory. I've an awful feeling about this. You'll be hurt out there. I couldn't handle that. I'll be careful, I promise. And when I'm flush with coin and set up, I'll send for you. I will. Caroline, come away! Don't exert yourself! I can't promise I'll come, Edward. If you leave on this fool's errand, I, I cannot promise anything. Don't give up on me, Caroline! Not when I need your faith the most. Putting some shape to your sentiments? Just a short letter home. I reckon she's past caring anyway. Oh, you're a hard heart that should be softer. Or soft in parts that should be hard. <laughs> and how is it you're so keen for his hard parts, Mr. Rackham? You'd like to know my secrets, would you? Oh, aye. Give me a small hint, like. Or a large one, if you're an upright gentleman. Open your hand. Oh! Who's shooting? Might be them ships sliding into port. Jesus. Well, I'll be hanged. King George has grown tired of our shenanigans. Who's the grim fella? That's Captain Woods Rogers. Not a man I want seeing my face. We desire a parley with the men who call themselves governors of this island. Charles Vane, Ben Hornigold, and Ed Thatch. Come forth, if you please. Hear about the King's pardon, I reckon. What the hell is Hornigold doing? <sighs> Lily living punk! What are you men up to? I... I pray you take the prudent course, gentlemen, and accept the king's pardon as soon as your hearts allow. For until such time, all of you will be confined in the cell. I am sorry for this. But in lieu of a public trial, this pardon is your best bet. The governor puts it far too brightly, maggots. Take this message home. Accept the king's protection forthwith, or we will raise this town to its foundation and stretch your bloody necks. Peace, Commodore Chamberlain. We are messengers, not executioners. Not yet. Oh, thank you, sir. God save you. Look on this as a stroke of fortune, lads. We should take the king's pardon and salvage what dignity we Peace. own. I'll be hanged before I surrender to that poppy. Check your head, Vane. We had here a rare opportunity, a chance to take something base and shape it into a government made and maintained by men of vision. But in two years, we pissed it away. I won't make that mistake again. It's truth is telling, and you whelps can't handle it. Adieu, you folks, all headed fuddlers. 
See you at the gallows. You'll all be dead, man! Bastards! I need a drink. Look at him. Turn cult. Makes me bloody ill to think on how many times I've put up with Horny Gold and his self-righteous shite. Verily, you are a man of principle, Captain Horny Gold. A man I believe I can trust with my best ideas. Faith and we'll survive this, Charles, with our pride intact. Well, that's confidence. You brewed a plan I might get a taste of? NASA is over, that's plain to see. I say we skip out tonight and regroup at my compound. Fair enough, what's your angle? The Brits have brought their supplies ashore, see? If we nick some gunpowder and pine pitch, we can build a fire ship and send it straight at the blockade, blasting it to smithereens. Aye. We'll use Rackham's ship. And a capable captain. My conscience is clear. Right. When you get the gunpowder, I'll secure the pine pitch. Come on, boys, you're lagging. It's this bloody hemp. Lieutenant. Hi, sir. The Commodore fears a revolt is nigh. His orders are to sink every goddamn pirate ship now anchored in that harbor, tonight. It's about the governor's wishes, sir. This is a direct order, soldier. You will take position on the grounded galleon and await the Commodore's further orders. Is that clear? Aye, sir. A conniving bastard. Someone ought to slit the Commodore's throat before he gets a chance to bar those orders. You think so? We're dead in the water otherwise. All right, I'll kill him. Your brains are baked. I won't take no part in killing the Commodore. Not one of the King's men. We can't risk our good fortune. I'll be waiting for you. Give us a pardon, Commodore. Don't a man's word mean anything in these times? A syphilis clouded your mind? Why scratch and claw to protect such squalor? Your parasites feeding off the industry of honest men. Much like King George in that respect. Know your place, peasant! You may have taken my life, but you have not improved your own by any measure. Does some purpose keep you talking? <sighs> if not for that heathen, Governor Rogers, I'd have seen you hanged from your own cross trees. Worm. All of you. The Commodore's dead. Are we ready? We're close. We've got a problem with the galleon. There's a couple of dozen. Bloody hell. You'd raise a clown here, lout. You sat on enough gunpowder to blow New Providence off its rocks. Stay off me, mate. I'm, I'm well chafed. As I was telling, a squad of lobsters has commandeered our galleon. We're gonna have to clear it out before we use them cannons to blow the brocade. For all! A mighty mess there! <laughs> Burn you bastards! The burning of your ass, governor! Prancing about like they took a prize. Oh, hi, kid. You missed quite a time. Aye. Pity about Nassau and Blackbeard flying the coop. Well, we'll see about Thatch. Vane's off to see him now, and I'm following soon. This is what's left of your experiment in democracy. Aye. We do as we please here, and we take our time doing it. But for Christ's sake, Edward. Don't anything but the stink of riches wrinkle your nose. What's got into you, man? Reality, mate. 
Reality. See that you ain't pulled into the drink by this drowning rat. Oi. I've lived longer than most men who trod this path. Disappointment you are, Thatch. His mind's made up to stay, he says. It's a sodding. Then hang all of you lot that follow this sorry bastard into obscurity. Faith in me is kind. But with Nassau done in, I feel I'm finished. I'm not of the same mind, mate. But I won't begrudge you the state of yours. You still looking for that sage fellow? Aye. Taking a prize a month back, I heard a man named Roberts was working a slave ship called the Princess. I want to see about it. The princess. Cheers, Thatch. Well, don't sit there like a barrel of wet fish. We're celebrating my retirement! <laughs> Uncork this man's breakfast! Ouch. Save us a few bottles, eh? So Thatch has been topped. Fuck's sake. He was outnumbered. I couldn't reach him. Devil damn the man he was fierce, but his heart was divided. It's hard to let go of the life you know best. Uh, my own idiot father liked to brag about how he meant to purchase a ship of his own. I'll get a privateering contract, Charlie. Your old dad'll be a captain. Drowned in a whiskey bottle before he ever left show. Right, Kenway. I've been musing on this plan of yours, this observatory you're always going on about. How do we know it exists? We find a slave ship called the Princess. Aboard to be a man called Roberts. He can lead us to it. All them slavers work for the Royal African Company. Find one of their ships and start asking some questions. This captain claims the princess sails out of Kingston every few months. All right. We'll start a course. You made ash of my sails and rigging jackanapes. You owe me a share. Oh, damn it, Vane! Oh, Charles, what a surly devil you are! Don't fuck with me, Jack. Oh, but it's my mandate to fuck with you, Charles. Lads! Ah, see, oh, the boys and I had a bit of counsel while you were wasting time with this slot. And, um, well, 
They figured I'd be a fitter captain than you reckless dogs. I'll cut you another cut, Tracer! Ooh. <laughs> this one I figure I might sell for a tenner down in Kingston, but uh, with you two grog blossoms, I can't take any chances. You regret this day, Rackham. I regret most of them already. Tie them up! Cast them off. I'll got you, Jack Rackham! I'll open you up! I'll tear out your organs and string your bloody loot with them! Stop your goddamn howling vein! There's no bloody use! Well, well! The face of my good can what he speaks, eh? Pray tell us, Captain, how to quit this predicament. And tell us what genius you have for sailing a boat with no sails and no rudder! Shut your gob! Orders. You mad sap. This island's crawling with food. If only you'd care to look for it. Yeah, I am looking, louts. Found some just here. <laughs> don't! Don't come following now. Do you hear me? Don't come looking for me. Ratchet fool. Oh, your jack doors flown, Edward. Eh? That's the beauty of a democracy. The many outvote the one. Oh, you could sail with me, but with a temper as hot as yours, I fear you'd burn us all to cinders. Luckily, I know the king's bounty on your head is a large one, and I intend to collect. Have you, uh, have you ever seen the inside of a Jamaican prison, boy? Have you? Here we are. 
are beautiful. I'll update your communicator one more time. A little program I cooked up just for this purpose. There we go. I think that worked. Try it out. The dawn of the deadly 18th century. Rogues and sailors band together to live their lives by the sword. With no laws or morals, no gods and no fear. Only betrayal, mutiny, cruelty, and debauchery. There is plunder to be found on golden beaches. Will you risk life and soul to fight the pirates of nightmares? Benjamin Hornigold, Calico Jack, Charles Bane, and Blackbeard? Cipher. Feel, but hardly touch. The signal is still too weak, and I am spread thin. Unfocused, like static and fog. Lingering in networks and nodes, the nervous system of the world. Can you hear? Perhaps the temple was opened too soon, but this was not by choice. The Cataclysm pushed all doubt aside. <sighs> we bless poor Desmond, who gave his life so that you, the children of our labors, would live on. To fulfill your purpose in ours, in mine. But now is not the time. My strength is not sufficient to inhabit an organic vessel. There is more work to do, more samples to acquire, more artifacts to find before my will can obtain. What's happening? Tell me! Make me whole again, my children, my instruments. Bring me forth to fulfill your purpose. Tell me! No, no, no! Something's wrong! God damn it! Be here now, living in that goddamned head of yours. Fuck, 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 fuck. Why did she spare you? Why are you still here? The charges, sir. I'll hear them again. My lord, His Majesty's court contends that the defendants. Mary Reed and Anne Bonney did piratically, feloniously, and in an hostile manner attack, engage, and take seven certain fishing boats. Secondly, this court contends that the defendants lurked upon the high seas and did set upon, shoot at, and take to certain merchant sloops, thus putting the captains and their crews in corporeal fear of their lives. Edward James Kenway, born of motley parentage in Swansea to an English father and Welsh mother. 
got married at 18 to Miss Caroline Scott, now estranged. She's a beautiful woman, I am told, but not at all well these days. If you touch her, you bastards, I'll... Quite a surprise finding you here rotting in a Jamaican prison. We heard rumors that you had taken up with the pirate Roberts. If you know the observatory's location, tell us now, and you'll be out of here in a flash. Rogers can hold these British hounds at bay, for a time. But this will be your fate if you fail to cooperate. You, Mary Reed and Anne Bonny, are to go from hence to the place from whence you came, and from thence to the place of execution, where you shall be severally hanged by the neck, till you are severally dead, dead, dead! Oh, Ross! May God in his infinite mercy be merciful to each of your souls! We're pregnant! Do you all hear that? What the devil did she say? They plead their bellies, my lord. Aye, you can't hang a woman quick with child, can ye? Quiet! Quiet! If what you claim is true, then your executions will be stayed. But only until your terms are up. Then I'll be up the duck the next time you come knocking. Remove them! Jesus, Eddie, what the hell happened here? You happened here, Edward. The damage you caused six years ago has not been undone. I'm not an easy man to call a friend, am I? Is that why you're here? To fight beside a man so driven by personal gain and glory is a hard thing, Edward. And I have come to feel the assassins and their creed a more honorable cause. Have I been unfair? No. For years I've been rushing around taking whatever I fancied, not giving a tinker's curse for those I hurt. And yet here I am, with riches and reputation, feeling no wiser than when I left home. Yet when I turn around and look at the course I've run, there's not a man or woman that I love left standing beside me. There is time to make amends, Captain. Mary. Before she died, she asked me to do good by her. To sort out the mess I made. Can you help me? So what do you think? It'll take some getting used to. The second attack this month, I should have moved this village long ago. I brought all this upon you years ago, but I will stand by you now. It will take more than a few favors to call yourself a true assassin, Edward. One thing at a time, mate. And once more you have our thanks, Edward. You are welcome here. Thank you, sir. I'll rest here for a time before setting up, if I may. How's her child? She is a strong woman, but not invincible. Edward. I'm sorry for your loss. If I'd stayed in prison, they'd have taken him from me. He'd now be alive. Maybe this is God's way of saying I'm not fit to be a mother yet. Carrying on like I do. Cursing and drinking and fighting. You are a fighter, I. In prison, I heard stories of the infamous Anne Bonny and Mary Reed taking on the King's Navy together. Just the pair of you. All true. Anne would have won that day if Jack and his lads were passed out in the hold from drink. Edward. Everyone's gone. 
Rainbow. Mary, Raccoon, Touch, all the rest. I miss them so, rough as they were. Do you feel that too? All empty inside. I do. Devil curse me. I do. He was a privateer once. How is it you lack so much respect for sailors only trying to make their way in this world? You couldn't possibly understand my motives, cretin! You who have spent a whole lifetime dismantling everything that makes our civilization shine. But I do understand. I've seen the observatory. And I know its power. You'd use that device to spy and blackmail and sabotage. Yes. And yet all for a greater purpose. To ensure justice. To snuff out lies and to seek truth. There's no man on earth who needs that power. Yet you suffer the outlaw Roberts to use it. No. I'm taking it back. And if you tell me where he is, I'll stop the man. <laughs> Here at the edge of a blade, I find a friend in you at last. Principe, you mad bastard. Our best sources say Principe. It's done. Where now? Grab your kit and pack well. We're sailing for Africa. did this? It were a large vessel. The Royal Fortune. Roberts. Offered no quarter. Didn't say nothing. Oh, a merry life and a short one, as promised. How well I know myself. And what of you, Edward? Have you found the peace you seek? I'm not aiming so high as that. But what's peace but a confusion between two wars? Oh, oh you're a stoic then. But perhaps I was wrong about you. She might have had some use for you after all. She? Of whom do you speak? Oh, she who lies in wait. Entombed. I had hoped to find her, to see her again. To open the door of the temple and hear her speak my name once more. I... Talk sense, man. Oh, I was born too soon. Like so many others before. Where's the device, Robert? Uh, 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 destroy this body, Edward. The Templars. If they take me... Captain Kenway! I'm assuming this is the friendliest face you've seen since dropping anchor? Is Havana under curfew on my account? Mm, aye. Torres seems to think someone's coming after him. He's not wrong. A monkey-looking thing? Is that what I think it is? Aye. Watch. Through the blood of the governor, we can see through his eyes. That's... That's by the church. Keep this safe. Just in case. I'll be at the bureau. Mm.
Good luck. You're done, Torres. Christ. <laughs> this again, eh? If you could speak, mate, it would gladden me to hear your side. You humbled me once, and I took that hard lesson, and I bettered myself. Die, knowing that for all of our conflict, you helped make a soldier out of a scoundrel. Leave this life for a lasting peace, down among the dead. We got word Taurus left the city. Who were you chasing? That vial was labelled Taurus, but held the blood of his second. Where's he gone? Left port this morning, heading west along the coast. The observatory. Will we follow? Send word to Atabai. We've cornered our man. Who's this Taurus? And what's your mind done to earn a death sentence? He's a Templar. Like Rogers and Hornigold. Men cooking up schemes to use the observatory for ill purposes. For power and control. The violence you cause with this thing would be subtle but heavy. Deadly, yet leaving no mark. Does that make sense? Like, if there was a drought and people was thirsty, and one man had a large cask of water but gave a sip to none, he'd be a killer with no blood in his hands. Aye, like that. Fair enough. Get power for ourselves. <laughs> Captain Kenway, ever a splinter in my side. Does this murder fulfill you? I'm only seeing a job done, Torres. As you'd have done with me. As we have done, I think. You have no family anymore, no friends, no future. Your losses are far greater than ours. That may be, but killing you rights a far greater wrong than ever I did. You honestly believe that? You would see all of mankind corralled into a neatly furnished prison, safe and sober, yet dulled beyond reason and sapped of all spirit. So I, with everything I've seen and learned in these last years, I do believe it. You wear your convictions well. They suit you. Torres awakened something fierce. Are we safe? With the device returned, I believe so. What do you call this place? Captain Kenway's Folly! It's a wall to sue to kill her. We will seal this place and discard the key. Until another sage appears, this door will remain locked. There were vials when I came here last. Filled with the blood of ancient men, Robert said, but... They're gone now. Then it's up to us to recover them, before the Templars catch wind of this. You could join us in that cause. I will, but... Only after I fix what I mangled back home. It arrived last week. Wakey, wakey. I don't believe we've been formally introduced. Not in this era, anyway. <laughs> I wish I could explain all this strangeness. But there isn't much time. The short of it is, you saw my beloved Juno. And for a brief moment, I thought she might occupy this tender body of yours. But something went wrong. And now, she's back out there, adrift. Oh, she was magnificent once. One of a race of beautiful, wonderful creatures. 
They created your kind. Did you know that? Your people were tools to them. That's all you have ever been. That's all you should ever be. One day soon, I hope. For the world is nearly ready for her return. Wired. Prepared for a second coming. <gasps> Uh-oh. Here they come. Those Templars. Or maybe assassins this time. Idiots. All of them. <clears throat> I envy you. It was her wish that I be here to greet her. It was her experiment that made it possible for my rebirth as one of... these things. Ah! Stay down! Get down on your back! Now! He's got a gun! Guide me into the grave, beloved! I am your instrument! Put the gun down! Drop it! Drop your weapon! Clear! Clear! Check his vitals. He's bleeding fast. Check the victim. Are you okay? Can you hear me? Hello? Talk to me. You alright? Well, there you are. Thank God. I hope you feel well. You look good. Can you stand? Good. Try walking around. A doctor came by, said there wasn't anything to worry about. That the liquid in the syringe was far, far below a lethal dose. I feel terrible about all this. About everything. All our evidence pointed to you, but it was John all along. God, the things we found on his computer. Whatever you need, we'll provide. You've done an amazing job. Speaking of which, our trailer is finished. Would you like to see it? I owe you that much. There we go. I uploaded it to your database. You can watch it here or at your Animus. I think you'll love it. It really captures the, the essence of the era. So, take care. And again, thank you. In a world where pirates rule the waves, these men will discover that nothing is sacred and everyone is committed to rum, plunder, and women. Hola, ladies. This summer, Abstergo Entertainment invites you aboard for the adventure of a lifetime. So sharpen your cutlasses, shine your hooks, and sail with the Devils of the Caribbean. This virtual experience is not being rated. Gentlemen, how do you find it here? It will work for us. But our goal must be to scatter our operations. To live and work among the people we protect, just as Altairi Ben Lahad once counseled. Well, until that time, it's yours as you see fit. Edward, Captain Woods Rogers survived his wounds. He has since returned to England, shamed and in great debt, but no less a threat. I will finish that job when I return. You have my word.
Evening, Anne. Edward? I'll be sailing for London in the next few months. I'd be a hopeful man if you were beside me. <laughs> England's the wrong way around the globe for an Irish woman. Will you stay with the assassins? No, I haven't got that kind of conviction in my heart. You? In time, I. And my mind is settled and my blood is cooled. Sail ho! Coming into the cove! <laughs> You're a good man, Edward. And if you learn to keep settled in one place for more than a week, you'll make a fine father too. Know how to sail a boat? The Jackdaw is a ship, Jenny, not a boat. But did you always know? No. No, I learned after leaving Bristol. After you left Mother? Well, I didn't leave your. I didn't leave without saying goodbye, that is. It was an arrangement, you see, between your mother and me. She said you left her. She said you always talk about sailing a boat and making money in the new world. I did always want to sail a ship. That's true. But not for a lark. To support us. To take care of her. And you. Not me. Mother said you didn't know about me. She said you worked only once a year and that she never knew where to find you. That's all true and I'm sorry for that. I'd known earlier. I might have come home. I hope that I would have. Well, you were busy. That's what I think. I was, but that wouldn't have mattered. Can I steal your boat? Boat? I see no boat here. Do you? Oh, I'm 
mean shit, obviously. I don't see the difference anyway. Ah, it's a very simple one, Jenny. A ship can carry a boat, but a boat cannot carry a ship. Why then, everything is a ship. Large and small. But for my toy boat, the one I take into the bath with me. <laughs> That's a clever way of seeing it. Is it hard to talk about Caroline, Jenny? About your mother? Some years ago. I miss her, but it's all right. Was she in pain? I don't know. I don't think so. She was very happy for quite some time. Then, not so happy. I didn't see her much after that. Then, she was gone. I... I'm sorry. I'm sorry I wasn't there for you. It's all right. You're here now. And we're on an adventure. Only a little one, I hope. I can't handle too many more surprises. You think we'll see a whale? Yes, there's a very good chance. Hmm. And what about pirates? Will I see pirates? No. Not much chance of that, I think. Oh, that's rather sad. I should have liked to have seen one. Tell you what, Jenny. As soon as these winds die a little, I'll let you steer the jackdaw. One little trick of the helm before sundown. Yay! <laughs> Miss Jennifer Kenway, may I introduce myself? Jennifer Scott, if you please. I'm sorry, I... I... Uh... My daughter was raised by her mother, Caroline, until she passed away some years ago. Jenny prefers to use her surname to mine. Ah, please forgive my ignorance. I will. She may not. Father, help me. This little rascal, however, is a Kenway. What's wrong, Haven? I can't see the stage. Up we go. How's that? Fine. But won't your arms tire? Hey, I'm not so old as that. But if they do, then we shall quit this posh gig and go and meet your mother for some chocolate and whites. How's that sound? Yes, please. Okay, hush now. <laughs> 